Good morning. Y'all remember that song? Isaiah 54. Our topic today is that you got the power. You got the power to condemn every word, every emotion, every attack that comes against you. You have the power. Yep, it's getting hectic. It's getting heavy, but we're going to walk through this text, and you're going to see how God is with you, no matter what's going on in your life. I didn't realize that's the only thing he really says in this song. Y'all yeah, remember it. Don't try to act like you don't. <laughs> And you don't want that. You don't want that. I got the power. And you trying to break my heart? My heart of hearts. That's what the songs say. <laughs> Glory to God. Ah, don't you love music? It always has a message for you. It all There's always a message, honey. No matter what it is, God has a message for us in it. Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54. God wants you to stop crying, to stop complaining, to just trust him in the name of Jesus. This is his desire for us today. This is his will. Isaiah 54. You have the power. You have the power. Hallelujah this morning. Bless the Lord this morning. Glory to God this morning. Yes, Daddy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to get right into the word. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord says, Word of the Lord says, Isaiah 54, and I'm reading from the Amplified. And the Word of the Lord says, Good morning, Sister Yvette. Good morning. Good morning. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity, God, to seek your face while the dew is still on the ground, God. We thank you for another day. We thank you that... We know that in your presence is still the fullness of joy. We thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for finding us. Thank you for healing us. Thank you for pulling us from the grave, God. Thank you for saving us even from ourselves, from accidents, from bad decisions and choices, God. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy, God. Thank you for the freedom that comes by the name of Jesus, God. We thank you for your blood. We thank you for your love that covers a multitude of sins. God, we thank you. We thank you for your forgiveness this morning. We thank you for your grace and we thank you for your mercy. You are a glorious, glorious God. And we love you, Daddy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, glory to God again this morning. The scripture in Isaiah 54, we know that this is a, a, a lot of times we use Isaiah 54 certainly to encourage the believer. And it can be done for that. But also, that text is about 
Zion. It's about the church. About It's about how God is going to always be there for the church. How God is going to rescue the church. And so um, a lot of times the, the part that we stay focused on is... Him saying, no weapon formed against us will prosper. Every tongue that rises against us, he will give us <clears throat> the power to condemn. But before that, he's speaking to the church that is not growing. Yeah. He's speaking to the church that is not growing. Mm -hmm. So all of you who are under the sound of my voice right now, who will listen to this later, tag someone, share this with someone, encourage someone. All of those who are under the sound of my voice right now, your church is in a stagnation. Your church is, maybe it might even be busting out at the seams, right? We know that the church, not just the black church, but the church itself has seen a, de a decrease in membership, I hate that word. I don't I shouldn't say hate it, but I don't I don't like that word membership when we're talking about uh coming to Christ. You're not a member, you're you're a part of the family, right? When you accept Jesus Christ, you are woven in, you are received into the body of Christ. And so what we what we but we call it membership membership. So unlike a sorority, a fraternity, a league, a club. Um, that is not what the church should be, even though sometimes that's how we treat it. I certainly have probably been guilty. I never leave myself out of any <laughs> revelation of correction that God tries to give his people. I, I try to be the first partaker of that. But Isaiah uh, 54 is speaking to the church. And so God wants us to stop complaining. He wants us to shake it off. He wants us to not take another drink. Don't worry about another thing. He wants you to understand that you have the power. And the scripture reads like this. Oh, sing, O oh barren woman, thou who has not born a child from her womb. Break forth with singing. Cry aloud. Those who have not travailed in childbirth. For more are the children of the desolate, the barren woman, the woman who has not birthed children, than the ch woman who is married. More are her children than the woman who is married, saith the Lord. Now, I started studying this scripture years and years ago. And when I got to a place in my life about two years ago, when I realized I'm not going to be able to have children, I went back to this scripture and really started studying this and meditating on this. What, what are you saying, Lord? Because he says, many are the children of the barren woman who did not birth children from her womb. Well, what are you saying? Well, today... And biblically, these are spiritual children. These are children that she has mentored. Children that that man has mentored. And again, we're talking about, remember, Isaiah 54 is talking about a fertile church. A church that is growing. A church that is thriving. A church that is adding uh, to its borders and expanding. So you got to remember that that is who Isaiah 54, Isaiah the prophet, is talking to. And because the church, even in the New Testament, is referred to as she, okay, we, 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 that same word is used here in the vernacular of a female. So I want to talk to us today, whether you consider yourself the church or you truly are a woman who has not birth, or you are a believer in Jesus Christ, 
male or female, young or old, that you do not see the productivity in your life right now. You do not see yourself advancing. You do not see the dreams and the promises and the prophecies of God coming to pass yet. You've been waiting, waiting and anticipating of the miraculous, the song says. Show us the miraculous. And so you've been waiting on God to do that. And so this morning, I'm speaking to specifically three people. The church, the body of Christ, the church that is not growing, that it is seen, feeling like it's not adding to the kingdom daily. I'm also speaking to uh, the believer, male or female, young and old, who feels the same way. And certainly to the woman who is truly that woman who either has received a diagnosis or um, just has not bore children yet for whatever reason, I am speaking to you as well. And so God wants you to absolutely, positively be encouraged this morning, no matter what the situation is in your life, he wants you to be encouraged this morning. He wants you to know that he who began a good work in you has promised to complete it until the returning of the Lord. And guess what? He's going to do it. He's going to do exactly what he said. And so we bless God this morning. So tag someone, share this, give us some thumbs up, some hearts, some likes. When you're feeling it and the spirit of the Lord has hit you and you are in agreement, that's how uh, I've learned. That's how we praise God in these live uh, teachings. So he says, he says, listen, sing. He says, sing now. He says, sing aloud. And what I want you to pay attention to is which Lord. It says, saith the Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Lord. Which Lord are you talking about? So we know there's a capital L, lowercase O, lowercase R, lowercase D. Well, this Lord is the Lord of Lords that is speaking. This is God himself. This is God putting himself in the position and the authority of who he is, who calls things that are not as though they are. He, it, is, it is the I am position and authority of God. It is Yahweh. It is Jehovah. We know, those of us who have studied scripture at any level, that this word Lord, L, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, the great I am, Jehovah Yahweh, that that name was so sacred to Jewish people that they didn't even say it. They didn't even say it. It was hush, yash. That's how they say it. They they didn't even they didn't even say Lord. They didn't even say God. You know, so they because J's remember J's were not a part of they their alphabet. So yeah, that's how they would just say it in, in respect and honor and reverence of him. And so uh, when they would write it, when they wrote the Pentateuch, when they would write it, when they would write the word, they literally would snap that pen in half and throw it away. Now, I believe a study said over, I want to say 300, I want to say 325, don't hold me to that, are the times that this, this form of God's name was used. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. So what God wants you to understand about a lot of the Old Testament, but as we're looking through Isaiah 54, is that this is the great I am who is speaking. This is the am that I am. Whatever you need me to be, God, I am that. That's who I am. That, that is that this scripture is coming from his heart and is being quoted by the prophet Isaiah. And we know that prophets are the mouthpiece of God. We know that they say what God tells them to say. And a real prophet ain't going to go beyond what God tells them to say. 
Because then you're in divination. Then you might be accused of being in witchcraft. Then you're operating in a place of familiarity or you're trying to, you know, make a dollar off a of prophecy. So we want to be careful about that. I'm sure uh, every person called to the, the, the dispensation, the, the position, as we say in the black church, the office of the prophet or the charismatic church, the office of the prophet, that um, we've made mistakes in that. And certainly those of, uh, those of us who, and those of you who have the gifts, the prophetic gifts, we have probably gone beyond God and said things that God did not tell us to say. But we thank God. We thank God that the word itself, God honors his word. And if you miss it, you just say, Lord, forgive me. I know that was mean. If you have an opportunity to come back and correct it, we encourage you to do that. So Isaiah 54, absolutely, Big Brother Paul. We pray that this word is a blessing and as it is released over your people. And so as he goes on, so remember the Lord that is speaking, okay? And remember his position, the uppercase, lowercase L-O-R-D, is the master, that is Adonai, that, that's who that Lord represents. So when you see that in scripture, that is often referring to Jesus, that is referring to Jesus. So the angel of the Lord, um, you are my strength, strength like no other, the, the power of God, the, the sovereign rule of God. It is that particular uh, meaning, uppercase L, lowercase O, lowercase R, lowercase D. So I wanted to establish coming into this, which Lord is talking. It is the great I am Lord. It is the, it is the I am that I am Lord. And so we know that uh, these people, when a woman was barren, when she was barren, uh, this was like a curse. This was like a curse for her not to have children. And so how that worked on her psyche, so is it in the body of Christ. When you are a part of a church or you are a pastor and your church is not growing, other churches, other people, other pastors uh, can look at you or have a tendency to look at you and say, what, what you doing wrong over there? Y'all under a curse. Y'all didn't had to move three times. You started with 1,200 and then you're now down to 300. What's going on? You had 400 and now you're at 100. So people will start to look at these things and judge you. You're the woman of a certain age, of a particular age, and you haven't had children. And like me, your body has told you you're not going to. Maybe you have a diagnosis or a condition that you you are barren. Uh, you are not birthing children. Or maybe you have a sickness, a disease, a, a, disease, a financial um, struggle where that it has limited you from breaking forth and breaking through to do what God has called and commissioned you to do. But God wants you to know you need to start singing today. You need to start singing. The person who feels like they are not being productive, the person that is lonely, the person that feels like their dreams have not come to pass yet. God says it's time for you to live. He said to shut that depression down, to shut that anxiety down. He said, dry up your tears. These are the things he told me last night at two o'clock in the morning. He said, don't you take another drink? You stop lashing out at people because things are not going your way. He said, if you just hold on, a good thing is coming your way. He said, a good thing is coming your way. I am bringing the answer. I am bringing, don't wait. Don't wait till the battle is over. He said, shout now. Don't wait until you see the productivity. Don't wait till you feel the baby leaping, uh, Elizabeth. Uh, he said, don't wait for that. He said, don't wait till you feel like Jesus then walked in the room in Mary's belly. He said, don't wait for that. He said, you need to sing now. Sing now in expectation. Sing now expecting God to do something. I know you feel like, well, God, when you going to show up, when you going to answer, I've been praying for this thing. I believe the prophecies that have been spoken over my life and I, I don't see any return. 
I don't see the ROI, the return on my investment, the return on my sowing. Just like I said earlier about the name of God. They, they honored that name. And so they honored it so much that they would break the pen and throw it away when they would write it. We dishonor the name of God. We don't reverence the name of God in the body of Christ anymore like we used to. We use Jesus for everything. Everybody say they're a Christian. In Washington, and I'm like, where are y'all? On social media. Folk that are atheists and agnostics and Jehovah Witnesses and Muslims, they put scripture out there and you following it, clicking it, liking it, loving it. Now, I'm not saying that everybody, you know, God can, if he can call it, cause a jackass to speak and say what the Lord is saying. Come on. If he can cause uh, Saul to say something, if, if he can cause wicked kings to be used, I'm not saying that people can't be used to speak the word of God and you get something from it. But is that who you should be following or should you be picking up your own word once in a while, whether it's on your phone or on your laptop and reading it for yourself? We got to honor the word of God. We got to honor, honor what God's word says and use it and step into it with a holy reverence. So God tells us to sing. He said and sing aloud. He said, don't hold back. Don't hold back in your kitchen. Don't hold back in the shower. Don't hold back in the sanctuary. Don't hold back in your car. If you're at the grocery store and you're walking down the aisle and a song hits your spirit, you ain't got to, hey, 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 you ain't got to be a psalmist. Carry the tune. Just, just carry the tune. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, so God wants you to sing with expectation. Sing with anticipation. A expectation comes with a want. Anticipation comes with a knowing. I need, oh, that's good. That's good, Jesus. Expectation comes with a want. But anticipation comes with a knowing. Expectation comes with a desire, a longing. But anticipation comes with a knowing that what you expected to happen, you know it's going to happen. You know God is going to do that thing. I'm still in verse one. Glory to God. So you sing. You break forth with singing. You break forth with crying aloud. God is good and his mercy endures forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord my God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Dance and praise and sing God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You, you ain't got to be the one uh, that's leading, hallelujah, that's leading the song. You, that you ain't, you ain't got to be that one. God just needs somebody to say, I'll sing for you, daddy. I'll sing for you, Lord. Glory to God. So he goes on and he says, he says, hallelujah. He says, he says, listen. In verse two, he says, listen. He says, hope. He says, now, now listen to this. He says, enlarge the place. Yes, yes, Psalms are 30. Uh, uh, I will extol thee, O Lord. It says something like that. I will, I exalt thee, O Lord. And so we, Psalm uh, uh, verses two and three says, enlarge the place of your tents and let them stretch forth. Stretch forth your curtains of your habitation. Now listen to this. He says, spare not. Lengthen your cords, strengthen your stakes. He says, for thou, you, you under the sound of my voice, Toya, Paul, Yvette, pastor, you will break forth. He said, you will break forth on the right and the left. Thy seed shall inhabit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Listen. How, what are you saying? You, you said I don't have any children. Remember, this message this morning is for the church that feels like it's not growing. 
that feels like it's barren, that feels like it's not productive. It's for uh, the body of Christ, male or female, young or old, that feels like they are not producing, like they are not expanding, like they are not advancing. It's for the woman specifically who has yet to bring forth children. But God is telling us to enlarge our place, to enlarge our tent. He's telling us to stretch forth your curtains. Stretch forth my curtains? What? What, what stretch forth? What, what for? I, I don't, it ain't enough people. He said, enlarge where your tent is placed. Ha! He said, enlarge where your tent is placed. Make room for more children. Make room for more. He said, stretch out your curtains of your dwelling. Don't spare. Don't, don't leave nothing back. Don't leave nothing back. He said, he said lengthen the tents of your ropes and, and put your peg, your stake, firmly in the ground. This is my land right here. This is my property right here. This is what my life is going to be like. Put the stake in the ground. By this year, I'm going to be debt free. By this year, I'm going to have a credit score of X, Y, and Z. Of by this year, I'm putting a stake in the ground. I, we, we will be in our place. And you got to get on one accord with this thing. You got to get on court because we know that the scripture reminds us in Proverbs, hallelujah, that, that the, um, uh, uh, Proverbs 13, that the hope deferred makes the heart sad. It, it makes the heart sick. But the, when the desire is fulfilled, the word of God says it's like a tree of life. You, you just feel like you can live. When, when, you, when God has answered a prayer, I don't care if it's a parking space at Walmart. Jesus, hallelujah, we can, hallelujah, we can get happy about that. And that's all right. <laughs> Glory to God. So God is okay. Glory to God. With you getting excited about things that have not happened yet. That you are anticipating because you have a knowing that God is going to do it. And so that's where God wants us to be. He, you, don't, you don't have to feel in despair because it hasn't happened. Somebody say yet. It hasn't happened yet. He is going to come. And he is going to come with his reward. See, see, the thing is, is that with this, he says, with in this text, and he talks about, you know, stretching out. He, don't, don't postpone your celebration. When you get the good news, when you get the good news, you, listen, you on that second interview, you need to start celebrating now. Go take yourself somewhere and get a little a, a good meal and celebrate that it's already done. Then when it's done, take yourself on the big thing. Amen. It's already done. It just hasn't happened yet. Remember which Lord is speaking. The I am that I am. What do you need for me to do? How do you need for me to come and work this thing out on your behalf? What do you need from me? Present your prayers and supplication unto God. That's what you got to do. It says, keep praying, keep praying, keep believing, keep asking. God wants to bless you. He really does. He wants you to be productive. He wants you to advance. So he's telling you now, prepare. That's what this, that's what verse two is telling you. It's telling you to prepare. 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 My, you know, I have our next book release uh, coming out. Um, the Mornings After, M-O-U-R-I-N-G-S. The Mornings After, From Grief to Glory. And, and I talk about in there, grace broken. My name in Swahili means grace. And how I was broken by this truth that I would not have children. Simply because I was waiting and trying to wait right on God to do it in marriage. Not discrediting or judging anyone who had children outside of marriage. Children are the fruit of the womb, the inheritors of the earth. We ain't tripping on that. But that's what the choice, I won't even say it's a choice that I made. God put that in my heart. So I had to come to a resolve, Yvette. I had to come to a resolve, Pastor Grace. I had to come to a resolve that God knew the end from the beginning. 
When I spoke it out of my mouth and said, Lord, I don't want to be with another man until I'm married. And I want to have my husband's children. I want... It, him, that child to be our child. I had them named. I, I just believed God that I would have twins. And, and so I just believed God and I already had them named. And then life happened and age creeped up on me. And now I'm sitting in a place in my life, uh, Sister Linda, welcome, that that is not my testimony. Well, did God lie to me? Did the prophecies that have been spoken over my life, have, have they, what, what, what was it a lie? Sister Diane, I, I had to ask, well, Lord, I had to have some talks with him. But yet God is telling me to prepare, to prepare, to launch out, to advance in this scripture as the church, as the body of Christ. I still have value, woman of God, sister, you still have value, man of God, you still have value, even though the thing that you believed was going to happen by now has not happened, or maybe will not happen, or it will not happen, hear me, Lord Jesus, I hear you, it may not happen the way you want it to happen, oh, I may not hear the prophet came to the house two years ago, almost three years now, and he, he stood up and he said, see, a lot of times prophets, prophets don't speak to me. Uh, those who say they're prophets, they, they a lot of times don't have a word for me. I used to think, Lord, am I, am I in some way in the spirit pushing them off? And the Lord said, no, no, you're not because you're, I'm training your ear from me first. <laughs> I'm training your ear. We're going to talk about this in the prophetic training on September the 1st. So you need to get registered. You need to go to my page and get registered. That sometimes God will keep the prophetic word from coming to you because he wants to train your ear to his voice before you start listening to the prophecies of man. You need to know the prophecies of God. You need to know what God has told you himself. Good God Almighty. See, because, oh, I'm getting a little bit off. No, it ain't off topic. Here we go. So, so Abraham was able to wait on God for 25 years because he heard God for himself. David was able to wait on God after being pulled at, as the last one from, from, from caring from the sheep. When God said, you will be the king, he had to wait about 15 years to see that happen. Joseph from the pit to the palace had to wait. So when you hear from God, dream the word of the Lord, a visitation from God, you can hold on to that word a little longer and you can hold fast to it. You can prepare and do what Isaiah 54 verses 2 and 3 says to stretch forth your borders, to put a stake in the ground. I believe this is what God said. And he told it to me. And then it was confirmed by the man or woman of God. Glory to God this morning. Ah, you got to remember. This is why you got to write. You got to journal. Man, woman. You got to journal what you believe the Lord has said to you and absolutely journal what what the prophets and those who who walk in the prophetic have said to you. You got to remember. And so you write it down. And so this is why it's important. And that way, this dream that is being deferred, that word just simply means delay. Delay is not denial. Delay is not denial. I know this is a good word and there is somebody you need to tag. You need to share this. You need to tell somebody this word is for them. Delay is not denial. Healing is going to come. Now, now listen, it may not come the way you want it. Whatever it is you're praying for, it may not come the way you want it, but know that it's coming. It's coming. The prophet came and he said, he said, you will hear He said, you will hear the pitter patter of little feet in your home. That was two and a half years ago, 2015. That's what he said to me. That's what he said. That's what he said. I said, okay, daddy. Okay. I had already started, you know, experiencing the hot flashes. I had already started experiencing that. I had already started experiencing those things that, and, the, and, and my, my body again telling me, oh, this ain't gonna happen. So now I had to get to a place that I came to resolve to say, okay, God, maybe it's not. Yeah, you heard him. You was there, Yvette. You were there, Paul. 
Hallelujah. I don't know if you were there, Sister Evie, but he said it. He said it. He said, my reward, Hashabahaya. He ain't God. He said, my reward was coming. He wasn't the first one to say it. Yes. And so, so he said it. And I took that word and I wrote it down. And periodically I go back and I said, now, Lord, I got tons of nieces and nephews. I got tons of great nieces and a great nephew. God, is that what you're speaking of? The Lord said, no, mm -mm. you will. Now, see, whether it's adoption, I don't know. Whether it's uh, my husband's children through grandchildren, I don't know. But I know that I believe that word because I still have a confirming response in my spirit that that was a message from the Lord. You got to know and, be, and remember what the Lord has spoken to your spirit. So prepare. Prepare. Church, pastor, man of God, woman of God, brother in Christ, sister in Christ, barren woman. How do you need to prepare? What do you need to do to prepare for this season that you have an expectation and anticipation of what God is going to do? Several weeks ago, we were in, sir, in Bible study. Uh, and the Lord told me to ask the people who had seen a dragonfly. Now, I'm telling you, I've seen more dragonflies in this summer than I've ever seen in my life. And so the Lord said, that dragonfly and what it represented. He said, so I started looking it up. And periodically, he'll just drop in my spirit. I was on the phone with a sister in Christ yesterday, a dear friend, yesterday morning. And I said to her, have you seen a dragonfly? The Lord said, ask her. I asked her. She said, I have. So let me just tell you, for those of you who have seen a dragonfly, as it relates to this text in Isaiah 54. A, a dragonfly represents... A speedy response, a quick and sudden turnaround. When you see one, you need to start shouting. When you see a dragonfly, you need to start shouting and say, my turnaround is coming swiftly and quickly and complete. When you see one, you need to be reminded that though they swoop low, they soar high. So even though it may look like it's going down, even though it has gone down, it's going to come back up. It's going to come back up. You just wait on God. You just wait on God with an expectation and an anticipation of what he's going to do because he's preparing you. It just hasn't happened yet. So you have to do the work of preparation. You have to do. I'm speaking to myself, too, this morning. So, Lord, how is it? What is it that you want me to do to prepare? Pastor, man of God, woman of God. Church is stagnant. Church isn't growing. Hey, what do you need for me to do? Maybe you're supposed to start looking for that building that seats a thousand, two thousand, a thousand where you can have two services, anticipating what God is doing. Maybe you're supposed to start looking at it a different way. What is it that God wants you to do? How does he want you to prepare? How, do you, how does he want to stretch your faith that you see something different than how you've seen it before? How do, if he can, can defeat them with 300, he can, and he didn't need 30,000, he can do it with, with, your, with your 12. He can do it with your 20. He can do it with your 100. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Ah, but you got to prepare and then you got to get the people in preparation mode. Hallelujah. And you got to be steadfast on a thing. You can't be, you know, we're, we're doing this project now and we're doing this project later. Just stick with that thing. Hallelujah. Put that stake in the ground that this is that. Yes, yes, yes. Do, yes, do multiple things in the service, in the church to, to advance God's kingdom. That's what he wants you to do. He's made you, he's, he's made us multi-purposed. But I'm telling you, God's preparing the church. God needs the church to prepare. God needs the body of Christ to prepare. Good morning, brother officer. God needs you to prepare for the next 
for what he's going to do. The only reason hope deferred makes the heart sad is because you don't understand that delay does not mean denial. So you get depressed. You get worried. You get anxious. You get fearful. And God said you don't have to do that because I'm coming. I'm coming with your reward. So enlarge your place where you dwell. Enlarge your tent, Brother Hunt. He says, he goes on in Isaiah 54. Hallelujah. In verses, um, help Jesus. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. He goes on in verse 4 and he says, Fear not, for thou shall not be put to shame. You will not be put to shame. You will not be put to shame. Neither will you be confounded. You're not going to be confused. You're not going to be confused. Not about this. There's going to come clear direction and certainty of what it is you are to do next. How you are to position yourself. What are you to do next to receive the blessing and the, and the favor of God? What, what am I to do next? Sister Kim, ask him. What am I to do next? Uh, Sister De Denise, what am I to do next? What do you have for me to do? For me to receive what you have for me. You got so so listen, God is saying you you're stuck in a place of capacity that can only hold in you personally. Um 30 ounces of my glory. I want you to expand. I want you to clean out that stuff. I want you to make room for a hundred percent of my glory. You, you've been satisfied. You've been okay with the favor that God showed in this season. But God said there's more favor I want to give to you. Remember the Lord that we're talking about. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. This is the Lord. In that position, the great I am who is speaking, who has all authority to cause things and to call things that are not as though they are. Listen, I got to say it again. It may not happen the way you want it. I, had, I got to a point today I can talk about it and not cry. But I remember when I couldn't talk about this place of not birthing children. That it, it made me weep. I love my nieces and all the young women and young men that I have mentored, but I wanted my own. And so grace had to be broken. You got to come to a resolve that God wants more for you. That it may not happen the way that you want it, but he's coming with your reward. He's coming with your blessing. You have to understand that that stretching forth your your tents and putting that stake in the ground and preparing for what God has for you is an act of faith. It's an act of faith. It's stepping out on faith. It's putting your toe, then your feet in the water to test it and see. Ah, this is all right. I can do this. The Bible says little by little, God brought them out. So what is that little thing that God is telling you to do? What is that big thing that God is telling you to do? Because all of it is according to your faith. And this morning, this word is challenging you. This word is steering you up. This word is charging you to trust God, even though. It looks like it's a dry season, even though it is a dry season, even though you're not where you want to be, even though you haven't heard the answer from God yet. He's coming. He's coming. Brother Stallings, he's coming. He said, so don't fear. You're not going to be put to shame. It looks crazy when you step out on faith with with 84 sit in the bank, bank and start planning a, a, a conference. Ha! That looks crazy. When you step out on faith and, and leave a six-figure job to, to pursue ministry or to pursue what God has called and told you to do and you don't even know what that is. It looks crazy to the world. But you, you got to do what God has told you to do in this season. To prepare for the blessing that he's bringing you. Because not only are you expecting, you have an anticipation of what God is doing. 
Ah, somebody need to put that in there. Expectation wants and desires, but anticipation knows that the thing they are expecting is going to come to pass. You got to know that you know that you know. And so as we're here, and so th this word encourages us this morning. It encourages us and it should bring us comfort. You're, you're not going to be, you're not going to be put to shame. You're, you're not going to be confused. He's going to download to you exactly what it is you are to do. Your steps are ordered in the Lord. He is the light unto your path. He is the light. He's a lamp unto your feet and the light unto your path. Well, you got to trust him. You got to trust him. You got to trust him. And, and listen, let me say this. In your trusting in God, you believe you heard the Lord. And let's say you step out and you do something. And it doesn't turn out the way that you thought it should have turned out. If you sought wise counsel and you continue to seek God in prayer and you continue to ask him for his will and his way. And it doesn't turn out the way you want it. Know that God knows something that you don't know. I, I'm, I'm going to use this testimony, and I, 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 y'all know I put myself out there a lot. And so, I remember in this season of being engaged, uh, and and this gentleman um, had made a promise and had had made a commitment to seek counseling. And so I thought he was going to counseling. And so we were moving forward and we were waiting on God, I thought. And then it all just fell apart. And there was a, a, a part of his character that displayed itself, which was why he was going to counseling, which was anger and rage. And I said, no, 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 I will not. I will not have waited this long on God. And now I'm going to marry Manic. That's not going to happen. Well, what the Lord showed me and what I discovered, he had stopped going to counseling. But see, I didn't know that. God knew that. And God will give us time to get it together. But he will listen to this, beloved. He is not going to give someone else time at your expense. Ha! That should encourage someone this morning, Sister Carla. God is not going to give someone else time to get it together at your expense of being hurt and harmed. He's not going to do that. Sure, the, the, the ending of the engagement and the canceling of the wedding and stopping the design of the dress and all of that. Sure, it was a little embarrassing, but let me tell you something. I'd rather be on, embarrassed a little bit, and it, it only lasted a second because my comeback was real good. It may, yeah, for a minute, my bounce back, hallelujah. So, yeah, for a minute, for a minute, but, but, but not at my expense, not at my expense. So I need to hear you. I need you to hear what the Lord is saying this morning. Because you are in the household of faith, because you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you do not have to feel ashamed about something that has not happened yet. You're in a dry place. You feel like you're in captivity. You feel like you're stuck. You feel like you're behind the eight ball. You feel like you, you know, you're not advancing. You're not moving forward. You, you don't, you don't even feel like you're moving backwards. You're just stuck. God said right there, right there, you need to prepare. Amen, Brother Paul. You got a bag, uh, a bounce back too. Prepare. Prepare. I see. I like football. I like football. I love, and, and I, I like basketball too. I'll watch it in the second half. I know I'm, I'm kind of goofy, but I love a good comeback. I love a good comeback in, in a football game. I love how they rally and win at the end. Oh, my God. Rally. Decide today I'm going to rally for my, for my victory. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this thing together. I'm going to stop complaining. I'm going to stop worrying. Hallelujah. I'm on a comeback. It's time for me to rise up. It's time for me to come up. Hallelujah. It's time for my next. Good God Almighty. It's getting, that song says, you got the power. What I open with, the, it goes on to say, it's getting, it's getting kind of heavy. It's getting, it's getting, it's getting kind of hectic. Yeah, because you on your way. Because your bounce back is coming up. You on the come up. Hallelujah. And of course you're going to be attacked. Remember what I said. 
The Bible says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You're coming through. Valleys are low, but when you're coming through, you go. You got to come up, y'all. Did you know that? To come out of a valley, you got to come up. Just like that dragonfly, they swoop low, but they soar high. You got to see there is a quick, swift, sudden turnaround that God is sending your way. Listen, I, I, I'm not the prophet that just gives... Um, I, I just, I, 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 I don't ever want to use the word only to encourage, even though that's the purpose of prophecy. One of the purposes to bring comfort, to encourage, to strengthen. But I also want, I desire to use the word of God that it's portable, right? That, that it's active, right? That it's imparted in you and, and it becomes portable, Right, that you can take it with you and you can remember. Wait a minute. God's, I, I have stagnation, but this scripture tells me to prepare, even in this dry season. Prepare, 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 prepare. You won't be put to shame. He said, For, for the Lord your God is your husband. He is, listen, he is the Lord of hosts. Ha! His name. He is the Redeemer of the Holy One of Israel. The God of the whole earth. This is the Lord. This is the doing of the Lord. He is the Lord of hosts. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. You got to understand, who is the Lord of hosts? The Lord Sabbath. Okay. Sabaoth. Sabaoth. He is the Lord. Good God Almighty, this is good. He is the Lord of angel armies. He's going to fight for you. He is going to fight for you. He's going to fight for you. He's the Lord of the, amen. Amen, brother, brother, big brother, minister Paul. Thank you, Jesus. He is going to fight for you. He is the Lord of the angel armies. Not angel army. The angel armies. This is the Lord who is on your side. This is the Lord who is speaking to you this morning from Isaiah 54. He wants you to know, I got this. I got this. This battle ain't yours. You ain't got to worry about I'm going to be embarrassed. I'm going to be put to shame. You put your hope in him. You put your trust in him. You said, God, if, if this going to get done, only you can do it. If it's him, I'm to marry, only you can do it. If it's her, I'm to marry, only you can do it. If, if you're going to heal Beth, God, only you can do it. If you're going to advance my ministry, only you can do it. If you're going to uh, uh, reconcile my marriage, only you can do it. If my church is going to expand, hallelujah, only you can do it. If I'm going to get out of debt, only you can do it. Because you are the Lord of the angel armies, and you fight my battles. All I got to do is prepare to receive. All I got to do is to get my stuff in order. The parts you can get in order, get in order. Get it in order. So when he releases it, it falls exactly where he commands it to fall because you have prepared. You have prepared, not only in prayer and fasting, but in the natural, you've prepared. Okay. You want your business to grow? Go open a bank account in the business name. Register the business. You want your ministry to advance? Register the ministry. You want your ministry of how you minister the word? Go somewhere and take a class. Hallelujah. Go sit under someone to be taught and to be instructed before you launch out and go get you a little bar and start your own church. Prepare. Somebody say it's time to prepare. Glory to God. So, so this is the blessing. His blessing covers. His blessing covers and expands everything. Thank you, Pastor Kim. It covers it all so that you can advance the kingdom and walk in your purpose. God is going to honor your faith. That's why you don't have to be afraid of being embarrassed. He said, if you love me, you'll obey me. Jesus is Lord. 
Hallelujah. It's that simple. If you love me, you'll obey me. He said, this is how, this is how you know what the will of the Lord is, that you obey God, that you believe God. The will of the Lord is that you believe him. You believe in him and you believe his word. I hope y'all believe the word this morning. Good God almighty. Good God almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so he goes on in verse six and I gotta, I gotta get through this. We only got a few more minutes. Verse six says, for the Lord has called you a woman forsaken. Remember the church, the body of Christ and the woman who truly is without children. He said, for the Lord called you forsaken and was grieved in spirit as a wife of his youth. He said, but you ain't got even trip on this anymore. He goes on to say, because I was mad at you for a minute because we know that the children of Israel, the church, the body of Christ individually, we keep tripping. We keep pimping God. We keep dishonoring God. He said, so I was mad at you for a moment. For a moment. He said, and I, I forsake you. I forsook you. Yep, I forgot about you. I said, I ain't going to do nothing else for Tuesday. I'm, I'm, she, she, look. He said, but, ha, we thank God for a holy but. In verse 7, he said, but, ha, with great mercy. He said, I'm going to gather you. I'm going to bring you in. He said, we're going to have a face-to-face -face meeting. We're going to have a face-to-face -face moment. You're going to have an encounter with me. He said, and with loving kindness, I'm going to draw you. Ha! I'm going to bring you back. Ha! Glory to God that's good this morning. He said, he said, because I'm your redeemer. He said, I'm your redeemer. Listen, I died for you. Somebody, he, he died for you. He ain't just going to give up on you. He said, don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. He's able to do the exceeding, the abundant above all you can ask, think, or imagine. According to the power, the faith of the Holy Spirit that is at work in you. He says, so I'm going to draw you with loving kindness. I'm, gonna, I'm going to bring you back. He said, I know you felt forsaken. He said, you, you know what it's like. To have somebody just walk away from you in a relationship. And you like, well, what, what happened? You, you just stopped calling. You, you broke up with me via Facebook, inbox. Immature. That ain't who Jesus is. But in the natural, that's the stuff that happens. You just, you just walked away from me. You forsook me. You forgot all about me. And you left me. God said, I'll never leave you. And I'll never forsake you. After he went through this, he said, okay, for a minute. But now Jesus then came. He then went to the cross. So never again will I, will I leave you. Never again will I forsake you. He says, so here in Isaiah 54, yeah, I was mad at you. But, but my grace, my mercy endures every day. Every day he's passing it out to you. So you don't, you don't have to grow weary in this well-doing. When you miss it, when you mess up, God forgive me. God, forgive me. I messed up again. Lord, help me. Just cry out to him. This text opens with telling you, sing aloud. Cry aloud. Sing loudly unto the Lord. Sing a song of forgiveness. Sing a song of repentance. Sing a song of thanksgiving. Sing a song of gratefulness. Whatever song you need to sing, sing it unto the Lord. Don't wait till you feel it. Just start singing. So he said, for a moment, this is what I did. He said, but my grace is available to you. My grace is there to help you. The Holy Spirit is there to help you. Jump down to verse 13. And it says, all my children, all of your children, all of your spiritual children, all of the children in the church, all of your natural children, all of your spiritual children, all of those, he said, will be taught by the Lord. Partly because you've learned your lesson. Because you've gotten wisdom. Because now you know how to trust God even in dark seasons. How to trust God even in dry seasons. How to trust God when you feel like on your job you're working in a Babylon situation. Good God Almighty. How to trust God in the midst of what's going on in our country and our government with the, with the number 45 that's the president of this country, with his Congress. Hallelujah. All of these things. 
When, when, oh my God, when, when a man who's just pushed somebody because they getting up in his woman's face and now he's, he's dead on, on, a, in a parking lot. This, this is the world that we live in. He said, but you can trust me. You can trust me. I, hey, Stephanie. Hey, hey, brother uh, Virgil. He said, I will be your vindicator. He said, I will be your vindicator and I will be your children's vindicator because I am the Lord God, your redeemer. Me, the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, the great I am. He said, the great I am is going to teach your children. The great I am is going to show up in your church. Oh, Jesus, I, I hear you, God. That God is who is his presence is going to show up in your church. That's how your church is. Oh, God. Oh, God. Do you? Oh, Jesus. Yes, we need the, 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 the presence of God. We need the presence of God. We in the need the presence of God. Hallelujah. We need the presence of God. We need the anointing of God. But we got to prepare. We got to prepare. Glory to God. Hallelujah, God. We need to ask for the Lord, Sabaoth, the Lord of the angel armies to show up in our lives, to show up in our dry situations, to show up in our non-productivity. Listen, some of you are non-productive and your churches are non-productive. Your lives are non-productive. Your businesses, your ministries, whatever it is, because there is. Mm-hmm. The devil, we, we, know what, we, we know what the scripture says. Hallelujah. The, the prince of Persia is standing in the way of the release of your blessing, of the release of your flow, of the release of you moving forward in what God has called you to do. That needs to become the prayer. Release the, the God, the Lord, Jehovah Sabbath. Release him. Release him over Pastor Kim's life. Release him over Diane's life. Release him over Stephanie's life. Release him over Virgil's life. Release him. Release him over Yvette's life. Release him over Paul's life. Release him over Beth's life, God. Release, release, release. Come forth with my angel armies. Hallelujah, God. Send them on Carla's behalf. Glory to God. Send them on Brother Stalling's behalf. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Send them on Denise's half and Sister Fulce's half, God. Send them on Brother Hunt's half and Brother Officer, God. All those, Leah, God. All those under the sound of my voice, God. Send Jehovah. Sabaoth. Send the Lord of the breakthrough. Baal El Perizam. Send him, God. Hallelujah, God. Send the angel armies, hallelujah, that there will be a release over our churches, release over, hill, over the streams, release over Union Memorial, release God, release, release over my life, hallelujah, release, release, release healing, fight the battle God, release, hallelujah, hallelujah God, we love you this morning daddy, he said now, he said, now, the righteous, that's you. That's you, Brother Jeffrey. He said, the righteous, the righteous, the righteous. I'm wrapping up. I'm wrapping up. He said, the righteous shall be established. Like that stake you put in the ground that won't move. He said, the righteous shall be established. He said, no, you will be far from oppression. Far oppression, lack. Struggle, worry, confusion, doubt, everything that comes against your mind, that comes against the hope that you put in Christ, that tells you that you're crazy, that tells you that, that, ah, uh, that, that one God, that one God, hallelujah, God didn't tell you to do that, ah, oh, God said, God said, you will not find confusion. You will not be put to shame. Hallelujah. You will be like a pillar that stands up in front of all to say, look what the Lord has done. Because again, when the promise manifests, when the dream that has been delayed but not denied manifests, there is a great hope. There is a great celebration. There is a great joy for the fulfillment that God has brought into your life. Glory to God. No more oppression. No more fear. No more terror. No more torment. It shall not come nigh your dwelling. God is going to gather you together. 
He said, if somebody comes against you, he said, it ain't going to be because he sent them. And because he didn't send them, they're going to scatter seven ways. Ha, huh? who's come against you? Who's come against you? You ain't got to talk about them. You ain't got to dog them out. Just say, God, get them. God, get them. God, get them. They messing. They messing with my release. Hallelujah. They messing with my tents. They messing with my song. They messing with my praise. They're messing with my productivity. God, get them. God, give them. Shoot, I wish I had. Shoot, I need to click on donation myself and give to me. Hallelujah. There is a donation button there. Um, anyone under the sound of my voice who desires to sow a seed of the ministry, please, please feel free to do that. And so he goes on to say, he goes on to say, and I want to end right here. I'm going to end right here. We know how this scripture ends in verse 15 and 16. He says, he says, and I will bring forth an instrument for his works. He said, because I'm the one who created the blacksmith. He said, I'm the one who blows the coals in the fire. This is good right here. He said, I'm the one who, do, who does that. Man, listen, they think that what they doing, they conspired against you. He said, but let, let, me, let me help you. Since I created this blacksmith, since I formed the fire, since God put the wind in the fire, since I've given him the tool to even create, he said, what you need to understand, so I will bring forth the instrument of his work. I'll bring forth the instrument. I'm going to let him. I'm going to let him create it. <laughs> I'm going to let him create the weapon that they think they're going to use against you. I'm going to let them create the weapon of their words. I'm going to let them create whatever they think they're creating to use against you. Because God just said, you are his righteous and you're not going to be oppressed anymore. There's not going to be another attack. You ain't got to fear no more. Not about this. Because you prepared. You've done what I've asked you to do. You sung for me. You trusted me. You put your faith in me. He said, I'm not going to put you to shame. He said, listen, I'm the one who created all of that. And I created them. He said, so this is what you got to understand. Verse 6, he says, so, since I did all of this, since I created all of this, he said, they'll be destroyed by the very thing that they attempted to use against you. In verse 17, we all know this. He said, and therefore, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. He gave him the he gave him the insight to create the weapon. He creates the fire. He blows the wind that creates the weapon that keeps the fire going, that keeps breath into the one who created the weapon against you. He said, "But it will not prosper." <laughs> Ooh, y'all made me come up out of my chair, Jesus. Okay, he said, "It ain't gonna prosper." He said, "As a matter of fact, we quote this scripture wrong so often." He said, "And I." will give you the power to condemn every word. You. We, this is how we say it. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you, um, God will condemn. Well, that's not what it says. He says he's going to give you the power to condemn it. That's what it says right here. He says, he says, I'm going to give you the power to condemn it. He says, and in judgment, you shall condemn it. You shall condemn it. You shall dismantle it. That word condemn means dismantle. It means you shall, with expression, you will firmly rebuke it. You will bring it down. You will, you will, you will come into strong disagreement. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not going to happen to me. No, 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 devil. You are a liar and all your imps get thee behind me. You, you have a strong disapproval. You got to condemn it. You got to tear it down. You got to bring it down and you got to apply it. You got to apply the word against the thing that you want to bring down. You got to dismantle it. Every, every, every tentacle tied to, to that threat, to that curse, to that generational curse, to that thing you keep struggling with, every part that's attached to it, if you, as you remember it, I pull that down. I denounce that. I denounce this. I pull it down. I don't come into agreement with that anymore. Hallelujah. I say no, 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 not again, never again. Condemn it. Put a sign up. 
This is condemned. You can't, you can't enter there no more. You can't even come. Nothing can come out and nothing can go in. <laughs> Glory to God. And then you appropriate the blood. Hallelujah. So nothing comes into your ear gates, into your eyes gates, your nose gates, your mouth gate. And women have another gate. And so you have to always just seal it. Seal it. I seal this thing. So there will be no weapon. Because see what I think we forget. Oh my God. Oh my God. We're over time. Help me Lord Jesus. What we forget in Galatians chapter 2 around verse 15. It says that Jesus going to the cross. Because the scripture says, cursed is he who hangs on the cross, right? That's what it said. That's what the scripture says. It says, but Jesus took every curse. Mm -hmm. So he says that by hanging on the cross, he made a public spectacle of the devil. <laughs> Go read it. Oh, yeah, that I saw. Colossians 2, about verse 15. He said, Jesus made a public spectacle of Satan. By triumphing over him through the cross. And he took every weapon. This is why, this is why, there is no weapon that can be formed against you that will prosper. God will allow them to form them, but they are not going to prosper for two reasons. All the ones I just listed, and because the weapons that could prosper... Jesus took them all. Jesus took them all. Fear, lack, worry, doubt, hurt, pain. He took them all. He took them all. The weapon of sickness and disease. God took it all. If there is sickness and disease in your body, I want you to say, curse, it was hung on the tree. I get it back. Get it back. I condemn. I condemn this liver disease. I condemn this 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 kidney disease. I condemn this sexually transmitted disease. I condemn cancer. It's been condemned. I condemn it. I condemn it. I don't come into agreement. Stop saying my diabetes. Stop saying my cancer. Stop saying I have heart I have heart disease. Stop saying that. You, if you're condemning it, you can't be speaking in the affirmative while you're condemning something. Something that's condemned, you can't, can't be lived in. So you can't say it's not worth living in no more, but then you claim it. It can't live in me, so I condemn it, but then you claim it as your own. God wants you to be encouraged today. You who are barren in a non pro in in an unproductive season of your life. Sing unto the Lord. Sing songs and psalms. Sing in tongues. Sing in hymns. Sing, make up your songs. Sing prophetically. Sing unto the Lord today. Put your faith in God. Put your trust in God. And know with all confidence you will not be put to shame. You will not be put to shame. There is not a weapon that has been formed against you. Even the ones you don't even know about. They will not prosper. They will not advance over your life. They may have been advancing up until now. But now that you know, you have the power to condemn. God, we thank you. And we love you this morning for who you are. And we bless your holy name. Father, I pray that this word fell upon good ground. And your people are encouraged and they are strengthened, they are comforted, and they are advanced to do the work of the kingdom. It's time to prepare. We love you, Lord. I love you with the love of the Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray that you have a great and fantastic Tuesday. Since I've been up most of the night, I think I'm going to try to go to sleep for a couple of hours. And so I thank you. I thank you for joining me for Fourth Watch Prayer. The Lord says the same. We'll be together next Tuesday with a word from the Lord. Please feel free to give to T-Tape Ministries. Please feel free if you are in the Indianapolis area to join us for our prophetic training on September the 1st. The book release is September um, the 29th um, from the mornings after From Grief to Glory. Feel free to join us for that. You can pre-order. Uh, we are taking pre-orders. Each author has a goal to pre-order um, 
have pre-order sales of 50 and so uh, you can order from me or order from any of them if any of them are your friends please support them and order from them amen i love you with the love of the lord i'll see you next week the lord says the same god bless